And so we're so glad that you're able to join us. And I hope that everyone got uh, a candle because you're going to need a candle, uh, bulletin, and um, the elements for communion. So if anyone needs that, I'll send one of my kids to get it. Everyone's good? Okay. Good. Well, on this Christmas night, we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of darkness and silence, you have pierced the quiet of this night with an infant's cry. Your angels have come to proclaim joy and peace, give courage and strength for all who respond to the needs of others. You have come to us as a child cradled in a borrowed bed of straw. Open our hearts to the lonely and the frightened and the hungry. On this night of nights, when we hear the good news that the heavens burst forth, burst forth with light, make us the light that shatters and scatters the darkness of hatred, intolerance, and violence. On this holy night, you have become flesh to live among us. May we be faithful to the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh. Amen. For those who are able, you're invited to stand. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and adore him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Today, today, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. All together. Today, today, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. 
Today, today, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory. Tell of his works. Tell of his works and his wonders among all the peoples. Today, today, a Savior has been born. A Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. All of the land, all that it bears, rejoice at the presence of the Lord. Today, today, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. The Christmas Gospel is from Luke, the second chapter. Luke writes, In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And when the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Well, again, we want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, and it's so wonderful to have you here. I said that at the first service. You know, you're kind of preaching to an empty room, and you know people are on Zoom. It's always so much better to see people in the flesh. So I'm glad you brought your flesh out for Christmas and that we can be together for this time. I don't know, since we have a small crowd, I, um, we have fans of Christmas music. People have been listening to Christmas music. Robbie, what's your favorite Christmas song? It doesn't have to be top, maybe top three, any of those. What's something that you like? Oh, the Eagles. I was not expecting that. I like that. That's a... Good. Yeah, I thought you were going to, everyone does like Bing Crosby or something. You did the Eagles. I'm impressed. Craig Taylor, what's your favorite Christmas song? Silent Night. That's good. Someone at the sing-along said away in the manger. And we said, does anyone know the difference between lowing and mooing? Like, why were the cows lowing and not mooing? But none of us grew up on a farm, so but nobody knew. <laughs> so we knew they were doing something, but they... We do a lot of Christmas music in our house and we have my whole back row there. And um, we'll tell Alexa, Alexa, play Bing Crosby Christmas music. 
and Alexa will pick different songs that he sang. But when Alexa gets to a remix of Bing Crosby singing to techno music, I don't know who put this on Amazon. People always turn it off. It seems to get too far on that. I was listening. I woke up very early this morning um, just because I just woke up early. And the person who plays Aaron Burr in Hamilton, Leslie Odom Jr., he put out a Christmas album. He sings a beautiful Oh Holy Night. And so this music accompanies us and singing is such a vital part of what we're doing because singing indicates where our attention's focused. And one of the key themes of Christmas is the idea that God is giving the people a new song to sing. Now, a new song from what? Well, so many of the readings we have from Christmas come from Isaiah, the prophet of exile. So we've talked a lot about the exile. The people get deported to Babylon. And the Babylonians say to them, sing one of, your, sing one of the old songs. Sing one of the songs from the, you know, where you came from. And they go, we can't. It's too sad. You know, we can't sing those songs. Not here. Not under these circumstances. And they hang up their stuff. They hang up their lyres. Now it would be a guitar or a bass or something. They go, we can't sing the old stuff. And we don't want to sing the new stuff. We're just sad and lone, you know, the trauma of the exile. Sometimes the songs that we're singing are old and familiar. And sometimes they are old songs rooted deeply in our experiences of loneliness, alienation, pain, sadness, and trauma. And Christmas comes as God giving us something new to sing. That's really what's happening. And one of the things I want to say is Christian singing is not a kind of wish fulfillment, like going, well, don't feel bad. That's it's not as bad as you think. Uh, Christian singing is saying, yes, everything that you're saying is true, but look at what God is doing in the midst of this. And God gives us a new song to sing. Hopefully you watch my videos, and if you don't, then this will be a new story to you. Um, but Monday night, we got a call from the city of Huntington Beach. And they said, a mom and her two kids, they had their house broken into, their apartment, and the thieves stole their Christmas tree and all their presents and a bunch of other stuff, but they need Christmas. She goes, she's going to do insurance for the other stuff, the computers and the TV, they, but she doesn't know what to do for Christmas because she's just a mom with two kids. And um, it was wonderful that they called us because they knew the Lutherans would help. I said that to the Catholics. I got a drink every Christmas Eve. I try and have a drink with the Catholics as my contribution to Christian unity. Uh, and they were so impressed. Like, oh, you guys are having a nine o'clock. They go, our bishop won't let us because they don't want the Catholics out past curfew. And I go, no one cares about the Lutherans being out on the streets, you know, past 10 o'clock. So, um, but I, I was, I called this mom and I was just so surprised because obviously if any of you have ever been robbed, you know, the, the feeling of violation being a victim of a crime. And fortunately, she had a camera in her house, so she, they knew who did it. It was one of the neighbors uh, who was being evicted. So they left and left town. Um, but in the midst of that violation, she was speaking out of a great sense of gratitude. And I go, how are you speaking so gratefully after what's happened to you? And she goes, well, um, you know, I'm trying to focus on the fact that my kids are okay. None of us got hurt. You know, They took stuff that can be replaced, but they didn't hurt anything that can't be replaced. And she was trying to just focus on something good. And then through you, you know, we were able, many of you donated ornaments. We put up donated ornaments on her tree. So she got a whole new tree with new ornaments. And then all the gifts for the kids were replaced and gifts for her were given in addition. And it was a wonderful moment of giving her a new song because the morning that the kids went to daycare, they were crying because they literally had nothing. And when they came home, they had a tree, decorations and presents everywhere. And the kids said, who are those people? And one of the little kids sent us, an he sent us a video calling us angels. But it was like a little kid video where he goes, you are, you, you're the angels. And I go, oh, that's, I think that's what he called us, angels. But he's a cute little, a cute little boy. This is the idea that we gave them something new through the work of the church. We gave them something new to focus on. And we know that that's possible. Sometimes you can redeem what happens to people. But sometimes we know you can't. Sometimes the pain, the trauma, the hurt, what happens to a person is so deep and so violent that there's nothing you can do to bring healing to them. And so how is it that those kinds of people can sing new songs? Like when Isaiah, as you heard, talks about uh, garments rolled in blood, boots trampling on people's bodies, uh, that's the kind of violence that you can't redeem 
with just some work of mercy. And yet, the angels show up singing this new song of Christmas. And it's the idea that even things that human beings cannot redeem are not exempt from God. And so that's what I'm hoping is that you will see that Christmas brings a new song even into all of the anxiety and uncertainty and strangeness of 2020, that when we work and focus on the deeds of the Lord, there's plenty to sing about. You remember earlier in the year, we did a program with homeless senior citizens and one of them texted me during the last service and she sent me a Bible verse. And I was just so touched by it because it was a verse about making music. We didn't even plan it. I didn't go, hey, send me a Bible verse so I can use it in my sermon. And she said, I sing of the Lord's faithfulness in the morning and his love at night, whatever the psalm is that says that. And she was focusing on the faithfulness of God, even for someone who doesn't have a house, who's a senior citizen who doesn't have a house. And when we think of Christmas, when we think of Mary and Joseph and the trust they have to have, and the idea that God is going to somehow see them through, then this is the new song of Christmas. Now, one of the things that we can say is for some people, they don't get it. But Christmas comes anyhow. That's the best part. My wife and I were at Ace Hardware earlier today. And it doesn't matter how much work you do to get ready for Christmas. There's always something undone. So I told her that. I go, here we are. We've done so much to get ready for Christmas. And it's still not enough. And she goes, why do you get so wound up? Because I get wound up pretty easy. You know, she's the calm one. And I'm the one that's like always wound up all the time. Uh, and she goes, no, it's fine. Everything, you know, everything will be fine. Everything will turn out okay. And it just reminded me that um, it's not a question of being ready for Christmas. The light that comes at Christmas and the gift of the Christ child come at God's timing and God's way, whether you're ready for it or not, whether you see it or not. I like to think of Isaiah speaking to us on this particular verse or this particular way. Because he says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So there are people walking in the darkness who see the light. And I say, so that's what God promised. And that's where I'm going to focus. But then he repeats himself and says, the people who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. And I think these are the people who are living in the darkness and they are so used to living in darkness that even if you shine a light in their face, they can't see it. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I grew up in a very boring part of Arizona. There wasn't much to do. And one of the activities, anytime we had relatives come or friends, we went on, there was a huge copper mine that had been closed and everyone had to get on the train and ride into the copper mine. And they still had old miners doing these tours. And they go, you know, what we used to do is we would bring mules into this mine. And once they went into the mine, they never left. Once they came in, they never left. And they were in the dark so long that they went blind and they couldn't see, but it didn't matter because they were in the dark. So they worked in the mine until they died. Um, and it's a reminder that when you've lived in the dark so long, you lose the ability to perceive light. It's just a biological fact, whether you're a mule or a human being, it doesn't matter. And so when Isaiah says, the people who lived in darkness have seen a great light, there are people who see and know the light of Christmas. And there are people who have been in the dark so long that even when the light of Christmas shines on their face, all they know is the dark. And really it doesn't matter which one you are because the light is shining and the gift is here. And so I, I especially wanna say that to people in 2020, I think there are some of you who are able to perceive that light and you're able to see it and welcome it and share it. Very much like the shepherds, like Mary and Joseph didn't see any light. They saw a baby with dirty diapers, essentially. They didn't get any angels. The shepherds get the angel. The one angel comes and terrifies them and goes, don't be afraid, and they're terrified. They probably had to change their diapers too after that when the, when the shepherds. And then they go, don't be afraid. And then the whole sky is filled with angels. And if they weren't afraid with one angel, how could it have been with all the angels? And they see that light, but Mary and Joseph don't see that light. People in Bethlehem don't see that light. They have to hear about it from someone else. And you'll notice so many of Jesus's healing miracles have to do with seeing and hearing. And we assume, well, it's just people, gosh, I'm glad I'm not blind or I'm glad I'm not deaf. But when we hear what Isaiah is saying, we really have to ask ourselves, aren't you? Are you sure you're not? Do you really see 
the light and the gift that God has brought. The same child who is laid into the manger, put into the manger, which probably was a hewn out stone or something like that, is the same child who will be wrapped up later, just like he was as a baby and laying into the hewn out stone of a tomb. And it's precisely God's intention to redeem, not just the moments that are redeemable, like a mom having her Christmas stolen, but the moments that aren't redeemable. All the unfinished business and trauma of human existence, which finally goes to death. All those things we could not fix, all that pain we could not salve, these are all the things that the light of Christmas comes to heal. And whether you're one of the people that sees the light, or you're one of the people who has been in the dark so long you can't see any light, the gift is still here. One thing I would encourage you to think about is that wonderful image that Isaiah uses, because it's not just a light, like it's not like fluorescent light or UV light, you know, even though maybe UV light would be good during coronavirus to sanitize everything, but uh, it's really described as a fire. This light of Christmas is described as a fire. God's presence is described as a fire. And into that fire, is thrown everything that has alienated and hurt God's people. The gloom and the darkness that covered them, everything's thrown into that fire. All the sheet music of the old songs are thrown into that fire. All the stories and songs we tell that don't have any place for God's work can be thrown into that fire. And so on this Christmas, I would just encourage you to think, like, what would you throw into the fire of Christmas? What is it that needs to be burned away as something that you feel can't be redeemed or can't be healed or can't be changed or can't be allowed? And this is oftentimes the secret pain that many of us carry or the stories that people have not heard or the things that no one can touch with their kindness. This is the light of Christmas and that's where the Christ child comes. He's born for moments like what happened with this mom, but he's also born for those that have no one except for God. And so I hope that you'll have a prayerful moment later or tomorrow. And experience the warmth of God's love. You're invited to stand as we sing the next hymn. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the tribe of the God. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born. In Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Well, we want to take this moment of prayer now, and we want to offer a word of congratulations to the Ludwig family. Their son, uh, Richmond, our new sailor, uh, was recently married, and um, we just want to congratulate him. And um, I know he's he's at the Hyatt, so... God bless you at the high. But, you know, during the pandemic and as people are navigating professional life and military service, um, they were just showing me some wonderful pictures of what it's like to get married at the pond, you know, uh, because that's how Orange County does it. So we just want to pray for him and Richmond and all those who are beginning new things during this pandemic. We want to pray for everyone who's still singing the old songs and can't imagine any kind of different future. And we hope that for each of us, the gift of Christmas and God's own intention to set us free and lead us in the good news uh, will be close to us on this holy night. So let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you came to save us. But you came to save us as one so humble and vulnerable one that was born in Mary's womb and held in Joseph's arms and wrapped in clothes, placed in a manger. We give you thanks for the life and ministry you had since your baptism that would also lead you to a place where you would be held by the cross 
and then wrapped in cloth and placed into a tomb so that no one would be far from you and that not even death could be stronger than your love. May that be the fire we throw everything into to see if it lasts in the kingdom of your joy. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for new beginnings. We thank you for those who are beginning a new life together for Richmond and Kim. We pray for all of those who are preparing for marriage. We pray for those who are preparing for new work, for new school, for those who are looking for new adventures in faith. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the light that shines in darkness and for those walking in darkness. Give us eyes to see the Christmas light. Lord, in your mercy. For those who live in deep darkness, for those whose eyes have been closed by darkness, may your light shine on them and may the testimony of your works become the new song that they sing, even if they cannot see the light of Christmas. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who are ill with coronavirus, for those who have died, for those who carry a heavy weight of grief at this time, Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who are struggling with loneliness, mental illness, anxiety, depression, Lord, in your mercy. For secret wells of joy, for moments of redemption, for the work and ministry of your church to care for those in need, especially for Catherine and her children at Christmas, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we come near the fire of your love and we offer all the things that we have. For those things that would be not of your kingdom, may you burn them in your fire. And for those things that have been burnished and polished and shine, may they shine by the world to see, especially on a dark night. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You're invited to sit and at this time you can open up your communion items and get them prepared. This is a special moment of light when Christ, who's present in the sacrament, is as present to us now as he was in the arms of Mary in Bethlehem. And this is one of the great gifts of grace in the church, the continuity of the promised presence of God, even in dark and harsh times. And so we remember how in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his people saying, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, take this cup, all of you, and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we pray together as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Behold Emmanuel, God with us, who comes to bring us grace, hope, and light. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus, we welcome you in this holy sacrament. How you are born in our hearts through faith. And that by this bread and wine, this body and blood, we experience the joy of Christmas. May the fire of your grace burn within us, cleanse us, strengthen us, and let us be bearers of light to every place that we'll go from this holy gathering. And we ask this in your name. Amen. 
Now this time we'll be lighting the Christmas candles. So once you get the light, I'll invite Paul to come forward. And then once he shares it with you, if you'll turn around and share it with the people around you. Paul, would you come forward and grab some of that? As the light is spread around the courtyard, we remember the first chapter of John's gospel. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And we remember how this word of God was made flesh at Bethlehem and is now present for us. God's gift of love, God's yes to us, a light that cannot be put out no matter the darkness. And so as we light these candles, we share this hope and we share this new song of Christmas of all the deeds that God has done to save his people. And now we join together in silent night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. All is bright round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. We're so grateful that you were able to join us for this time, this holy time, during an unusual, and we maybe say unholy year. And so we hope that you'll take this light with you and carry it where you go, remembering that this night is for you. In the same way we say that for the sacrament, this is for you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're invited to stand as we sing our final hymn. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven, let heaven and nature. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining us. And if anyone wants to take a point set at home, you'd be more than welcome to if you want a little color of Christmas at your house. God bless you and Merry Christmas.